Welcome back to our year in the edition of This Week in Missouri Politics. Very glad to have you this week, and we're very glad to be joined by Jay Ashcroft, candidate for Secretary of State on the Republican side. Uh, Jay, welcome back to This Week in Missouri Politics. Well, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. And before we get started, I just want to wish you a happy holiday season as we're getting into the, the wintertime, that part of December. Well, thank you very much to your family as well. Um, let's start. You just wrapped up a tour of Missouri's 114 counties. I assume Western Butler County was included in that. Yes, it was. Uh, let me ask you, what did people come up and talk to you about? I know you're running for Secretary of State, but what were the issues that were on the people you spoke with mind? Well, obviously, um, I talked to a lot of county officials, and mm -hmm. one of the things that they were concerned about is that when people are writing legislation, that they worry about how it affects their county and not just St. Louis mm -hmm. County or Jackson County, but what does it mean for Worth County? What does it mean for Clark County and, well, Butler County? <laughs> well, uh... Did they have anything in specific in mind with those laws or just generally a, a focus on making sure rural Missouri was thought of? You know, the, the most important focus they have, and it's really the reason why I'm running, is they have this understanding and this belief, and I agree with them, that they know how to run their lives better than the government does. And they feel like if they could just be left alone, if they could live their lives the way they want to, as Amen. long as they're not hurting someone else, then that would really give them the best opportunity to be successful. So uh, you're running for Secretary of State. Uh, last time you were on, you brought us, right when you had started it, your uh, petition to put voter ID on the ballot. How's that going, and what's the, what's the next step in that? Um, it's going well. Um, I'm not sure I realized how big the state was <laughs> when, I, when I talked about that. Um, but it's really been humbling how many people across the state have been willing to take part in that. And I think that the greatest thing about it is getting we the people back involved in government and making sure it's doing what we the people want it to do. Uh, so is it filed? Do you submit that somewhere? Oh, um, well, we have start, we've been collecting signatures. Mm -hmm. We're collecting them. We're checking them against the rolls to make sure that they're, 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 good, they're valid signatures. But we won't turn them in until May. That's the, the deadline for turning them in. So we'll collect as many signatures as we can because after we turn them in, they'll be checked to make sure that they're actually registered voters and that the signatures match. So you just keep collecting signatures as many as you can for as long as you can. So crisscross in the state, uh, do you see any of the Republican candidates for governor? Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen Republican candidates for virtually every <laughs> office you could talk about. Do you pick the favorite in the governor's race yet? What, how do you size it up? Oh, yes. I am all in for the Republican nominee and will support <laughs> them as heartily as I can. Uh, why, why do you think of the race? I mean, four-person race, pretty, pretty kind of complex. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not part of it. Um, <laughs> no, I think, you know, a lot of people say that, you're, you know, you hear people talk about, gee, there's four people running, and, you know, how does that work for Republicans? And you have, uh, you know, the current Attorney General, Chris Coster, that's going to be running on alone. I think it's great. I think it shows how strong the party is, that we are the party of ideas, that we have so many different people that have good ideas, that are strong candidates, that are willing to put in the time and effort to make the state better. And the Democrats can only find one. Speaking of a multi-candidate field, what about the what about the field for president? I mean, that is it's, <laughs> people have to be talking about that when you're traveling the state. They do, and it's uh, you know it, it refers back to that that same thing that there are so many diverse opinions about who they would like to see. I, I am really happy because there have been so many presidential campaigns in the past where they're looking for the nomination. I've said, well, I could probably vote for yeah. that one or maybe that one. There are so many people that I could see really leading. Do you have a short list yet? Have you narrowed it down? Uh, uh, not one that I'm ready to give out. I, <laughs> I think that as as an as an individual that's running for statewide office mm -hmm. in the state of Missouri, I want to do everything I can to bring every presidential candidate to the state and allow them to learn what works here in Missouri. Because frankly, if they ran Washington the way we run Missouri at the county and local level, things would be a lot better. So I'm I'm not taking sides there. I'm just trying to encourage them to come and listen to the people of the state. Well, while, while we have you on here, um, a lot's been made of the Syrian refugee issue. And your father is the former governor of Missouri, senator, and United States Attorney General John yeah. Ashcroft. Uh, it's Tough a act long follow. resume, sure. <laughs> um, I was wondering, what's he make of the Syrian refugee issue? How, do he, how does he think we should handle this? Well, I, I think he has a pretty common sense approach, the idea being that, you know, throughout history, America has been a compassionate country. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is any country in the world in the history of America that has been as compassionate or willing to risk. You know, we have risked ourselves to help other people time and time again, really, mm -hmm. to promote liberty and freedom. Um, so it's, it's understandable that we want to help those people, but we also need to make sure that we're vetting them appropriately. 
Um, if people want to come to our country to steal, mm -hmm. kill, and destroy, it's right for us as a country to say no. So we just need to make sure that we have a process where if we're allowing someone to come in, they're not coming to do us harm. Last question at Thanksgiving. Did he sing Let the Eagle Soar? <laughs> he did not. I was with my in-laws down in Howell County. Got it. Uh, Jay Ashcroft, thank you so much for being on this week of Missouri Politics, and we look forward to having you back as the campaign goes on. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Scott. And have a Merry Christmas you too. to you and your family. Um, we'll be right back with our Opinion Maker panel, but first let me leave you with this week's uh, leading Missouri economic indicators. All across Missouri, our new car and truck dealers are building strong local economies. When you buy a car or truck in Missouri, you're helping to support over 20,000 Missouri families who rely on the auto industry for good paying local jobs. You're also helping fund our communities, schools, first responders, and our roads because dealers generate millions of dollars in tax revenue. Missouri's automobile dealers have been the foundation of our communities for generations and for generations to come. The Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, the heart of Missouri. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right-to-work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. Missouri politics with our opinion maker panel and we all got together and decided to do a collective Merry Christmas the beginning and end but we'll start now with uh, Representative Glenn Coldmire from Odessa thank you very much for coming over chairman of the Transportation Committee thank you thanks for having me former senator now uh, consultant uh, Tom Dempsey first time on the show on the panel so thank you very much for coming to this half my pleasure good to be here with you Scott Kevin Stamps uh, political operative rising blood of Kansas City we're very glad to have you over here thanks for thanks for coming Glad to be here. Thank you. And uh, Representative Jeff Rorto will be no uh, stranger to our viewers. Uh, the book is out. Let's see the cover of the book. Thanks. Afghanistan, the war on police. Thanks for the shameless plug, Scott. I appreciate it. it. Uh, we, we dropped it in there. We had to get you, we had to get you here somehow now that you're CNN famous and stuff. <laughs> so give me the cliff notes on the book. Well, uh, you know, this is law enforcement's story. Uh, not meant to tell the story from any other perspective. Uh, I spent the last year and a half trying to set the record straight on what happened in Ferguson, and and this is just about the uh, the cops' eye view of Ferguson, and and really also about the broader national conversation that we never had about policing in America and race relations in America. And it seems to continue to be in the news that the topic goes on and on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it it seems like we're in a new era, and uh, the the law enforcement changed forever on August 9th when when Michael Brown was shot and killed, and uh, you know I I. I think we can we can move forward from that, and we can make some great advancements as a country. Uh, but we have to be honest about what happened that day. And until we are, we're we're locked in a really really bad cycle. And folks can get it on Amazon.com, right? Amazon Kindle makes uh, a Christmas gift, right? iTunes as of today, uh, or my website www.thewaronpolice.com. Nice. Yeah. Uh, speaking of another war, uh, Representative Kolkmeyer, the Republican primary seems interesting. You see statewide candidates like Jay Ashcroft. He uh, he loves all four of them. Do you have a favorite amongst the four? Well, if I think Peter Kinder, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kinder, has a definite uh, edge up with his name ID. But I think uh, Catherine Hannaway is definitely uh, one to uh, keep an eye on. She's working it hard. She really has mm -hmm. a good ground roots, gr uh, grassroots organization going. And uh, who would have thought nine months ago she'd have the least drama of any campaign? True. Interesting. Yes. Kevin, does the, um, so this week it came out that a former campaign manager for Lieutenant Governor Kinder, uh, the, the reports were on, there's some money missing. Um, 
does this feed into a narrative about the lieutenant governor that there's some always some kind of drama around, or is this just a blip we're all going to forget about? I think I think it does. Uh, last time he tried to run. Uh, you know, he was plagued by problems. Um, this time, you know, he's just getting off the ground and immediately there's more problems. I think it also drives a bigger narrative and conversation that we need to have about ethics reform in, in this state and contribution limits and how we track and report all of that. Gotcha. Uh, Jeff, is this something that, that goes on or is this forgotten about? Uh, I think it's better to have this happen this far away from Election Day for sure. Peter. Um, I, I think it hurts him, as, as Kevin said, because it does sort of, of cobble into the, the criticisms that we've heard about Lieutenant Governor Kinder in past elections. Uh, Senator Dibsey, you've picked a favorite in the race. Um, it, this is something that, that could conceivably happen to a lot of different candidates. Um, does this feed into a negative narrative about the Lieutenant Governor, or is this something that'll be gone and forgotten? You know, I. You know, to Jeff's point, I think that it came out this far in advance. It's certainly something that you, you know, the, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kinder can move on from. Sure. Um, but when you're, you know, in the different parts of the state, you want to be talking about uh, why it's important for you to lead the state, whether it's on, uh, you know, criminal justice or education or economic development. And so, the more time you're talking about. Um, you know, campaigns finance, campaign finance issues mm -hmm. within your own campaign, then the less you have to talk about, you know, these things that really affect people's lives. The candidate who you've supported, Catherine Hannaway, she uh, had a pretty tumultuous start to the year, but has sort of pushed through. And now, I mean, there's no reason she couldn't win the race, like like any of the, any of the four. Yeah, I've, I've been when I've been on your show before, mentioned mm -hmm. my uh, support for Catherine, and um, you know that's. I think what you get with Catherine Hannaway, she's an extremely hard worker, um, and that means she puts in the effort day in and day out, and um, there are going to be little hiccups along the road. And um, But, um, you know, in the uh, conversations I have with friends about who looks good and who maybe doesn't look as good during debates, I've always heard positive remarks about Catherine's uh, performance. Kevin Stams, as a Democratic operative, is there one of the four who you really want to run against, and is there one who you'd just assume not run against? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of Democrats are, are worried about Eric Greitens. Um, you know, he was relatively unknown, and, and he's been able to... He can raise the money. Raise a lot of money, and he's gotten a lot of traction very fast. He's got a great background and biography, and, and you, know, if, you know, I think it's very tough for him to come out of that primary, but uh, he could be, uh, you know, someone to... You, could give, you had a big uh, smile on General, your face uh, when you heard the when you heard the recorded phone call of him, <laughs> and that was, as a Democratic it, operative, that's got to be just like candy. At, at, you know, sit back and hear two Republicans going at it like that. It, it speaks it speaks to uh, the trouble he'll have getting out of the primary and all the way through the the, the general election because it's uh, you know it shows his inexperience in campaigning uh, that he would do something you know like that. This this kind of thing is commonplace now. These these microsites. You know, thrown up uh, by outside parties attacking candidates, and and just that he would you know make the call. And he kind of had to see this coming, right? I yeah, mean, it's not like no one was going to attack him. I mean, he had to assume when he filed, this was what was going to happen. Yeah, the I, I you know I've not been a candidate myself. These guys all have against before. I think, you know, everyone says you got to be ready for it, be prepared for it. Guys like me telling you it's gonna, it's coming, it's coming, and and you think you're ready, and and you never are, you know. It's uh, Representative Colmar. It's different when it's your name, right? That That's they're correct. when they're on TV talking about your secretly taped phone call and how you got angry. It's it's a different thing. Or you see that mailer that came out. Yeah, <laughs> that, that cutting mailer. Yes. Uh, speaking of, we had uh, Attorney General Costa on the show last week. It seems like the biggest problem for the Republicans in general, whether it's Greitens or Kinder, Hanaway, John Bruner, is that there's a lot of Republicans that aren't terrified by Governor Costa. How do you beat him? I mean, what what do you do to what do you do to, to knock him down and beat him after the primary is over? Well, I had uh, I heard your show and Ryan Johnson pretty well probably summed it up right when he was a, a Democrat when he was a Republican he really wasn't a Republican now that he's a Democrat he's really not a a Democrat he's a political operative so anyway that's... so he didn't want to be an opportunist what are you saying opportunist that's for sure Tom uh, Lizzie, what is Chris Costner going to hear? Um, well, I think you're going to see efforts to tie him to the national party. Sure. Um, it's been very successful in Missouri and all over the country. Sure. And um, so to the extent that uh, the political consultants can do that, um, 
you know, it'll have traction. Um, it's very important in state political races what the national mood of the country is. And so, you know, are the winds blowing in, fa in, in his favor or against him um, come election time? So, you know, I think who, uh, how people perceive the parties at the top of the ticket is going to affect those races uh, further down. Speaking of races further down, Jeff Florida, a story broke this week about uh, these, the Syrian issue has been all over the news. Sure. Donald Trump mostly, but in Missouri, the Republican candidate for attorney general participated in a lawsuit um, suing the Arkansas law enforcement over a person of a self-described American terrorist right to grow his beard longer and practice Islam. In Arkansas, they say you can't have a beard in prison in case you escape. You can quickly change your look and make it harder to capture. You're in law enforcement. Right. Um, there's been already calls from other law enforcement that you can't be the top law enforcement officer right. if you're suing law enforcement. How does that set? Well, listen, I, if, if I ever had any aspirations to be the top cop in any state, I, I would have never taken a case defending a, a self-proclaimed American Taliban uh, who stabbed a woman, stabbed his girlfriend, uh, violently attacked uh, a person, and uh, now is is taking all the way to the Supreme Court their argument that uh, that their religious freedom as a Muslim to grow a beard outweighs the interest of the state and the correction system in making sure that escapees are readily identifiable, that, that they can't hide contraband in their beard. You're in law enforcement. Is that a right. real concern? Explain I think that it to is. I, I'm really shocked. You know, I, Holly won the case in the Supreme Court, and I'm, yeah. I'm really shocked that the court, uh, particularly uh, this court, uh, would would buy that argument that that in balancing religious freedoms against uh, pub, the public safety needs of the state of Arkansas uh, that they would that they would weigh it this way and, and weigh in favor of the of the uh, person's right to grow a beard. I mean that's uh, shocking to me. Representative Kovmeyer, I think most folks are in favor of religious freedom, even yes. if you're a Muslim. Some of the comments from Donald Trump, um, while popular in some quarters, probably a little far. But it, it's probably hard to explain that to a person in Odessa that you were advocating a guy should practice his Muslim faith in standing in op opposition of public safety. How do you explain that? You don't. You can't. It's, it's very tough. Um, probably this Syrian refugee issue has been my number one contact <laughs> wow. uh, in, in, since I've been in office. Um, we've had some, we've had a lot of Top issues, yeah, but to say. this Syrian refugee issue is is over the top. Uh, it it tops them all, and I think this uh, deal with Holly is extremely problematic with him moving forward. Tom, you've been somebody that, that me personally, a lot of other folks I've looked up to, is effectively winning elections and having judgment. This seems very hard to explain. You know, it's uh, certainly not uh, the thing that you want out there. I, you know, it's. It's not going to help him win the campaign, that's for sure. Um, you know, which I, I doubt he was thinking about that time when he was sure. representing yeah. him. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I've got to be uh, upfront and say that you know I I endorsed uh, Kurt Schaefer. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's I've got probably look pretty feel good about that today, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Kevin Stams, there is something to be. I mean. Religious freedom is important, and, and, and a lot of folks are very cognizant of that fact when we talk about uh, Christian religious freedom. Um, this seems like more of a balancing test, and, and I had one person, um, when the story was posted, text me and go, can you believe this Republican Party? You can't stand up for Muslim religious freedom, or, it, or people say you should quit the race. Uh, does this, is, this a, is this a fact of the balancing test is not being applied properly, or the Republican Party in Missouri may be too far out on a, on a Trump-type limb? I, I think it's a, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I, I, there's, there's a lot of inconsistencies here. I think, uh, you know, he is an, he's an officer of the court, uh, sworn to uphold the Constitution. Our Constitution says sure. that everyone has a right to, you know, uh, a defense in court, and it's not his job as an attorney to judge the rightness or wrongness of his case, but to represent him to his best ability. And I think it would be hypocritical for any other attorney to attack him on that issue, uh, having had taken the same oath to, well, to do the same. I think we both agree that's going to happen. Right? I mean, oh, that's, I mean, that's, that's going to happen. Yeah. There's no doubt yeah. about it. I'm, I'm just 
pointing out, you know, that, uh, that I mean, that, and maybe that would uh, that appeal to some of the voters that he talks to, you well, know, to, on a, issue on a constitutional issue. I think it definitely will be. I think it's going to be a huge issue. Jeff Ward, is this an issue in July? Absolutely it is. And, and we're not talking about prayer or, or the guy having yeah. a Koran in the cell. True. We're talking about facial hair. And, you know, you lose certain rights when you go into prison. And I think it's not unreasonable for the Arkansas Department of Corrections to, to regulate facial hair inside that institution. Tom, is this an issue that's not just a December issue? Is this an issue that you'll see if, if the race plays out in Holly Files in July? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think with the um, kind of the dialogue that's happening in the country and the, the concern that many people have. Um, Especially inside the Republican Party. Yeah, right? yeah it absolutely said. plays into um, um, kind of when people are trying to get a better sense of uh, where you're from and what you're about. I think it, it's a, a little episode in his life that, that tells a story. Representative, is this something that we'll hear about uh, up into and especially uh, before voting starts in August? Absolutely. Unfortunately, we will. Um, so, kind of a fun thing. I wanted to start, uh, as we, this is our last show before the end of the year, I want to start with the issue of the year. Representative, you're in Jeff City. There's been a lot of issues this year. What's the one issue that sticks out in your mind this year? Right to work. Right to work. Will right to work come back this session? I hope it doesn't, but I, it may. Is this more of a, a posturing for 2017, whatever happens this year? That, this is, coming year? that is possible, yes. So maybe the biggest issue of the year, the one that caught your eye. I think on this side of the state, it was the municipal court reform. Yeah. Uh, the, so some of the North, North County cities got together right. and sued. Do you think they'll be successful? Uh, no, I don't. And it, it, it's kind of funny how they, they ended up transitioning into going after grass tickets or, you know, blinds being off. I guess there's a bill now to, to address that issue. I assume that passes, right? Yeah, I, uh, Senator Schmidt has, I think, a follow-up bill, um, more cleanup language and maybe working in some other areas where there's additional abuses. And, um, you know, I... I, I th there was a lot of effort put into that bill, not just by Senator Schmidt, by, but by many others, so mm. that this, uh, this law would uh, be able to hold water when it went to court. And uh, so I feel strongly about it, and they'll continue to strengthen it in the legislature. Kevin, issue of the year, biggest issue you saw. I think if there's, if there's anything that's been uh, an overarching theme this entire year, uh, it's been uh, ethics issues and ethics reform mm -hmm. from the since the speaker's resignation, uh, Senator LaVote over the summer, and now uh, this campaign finance issues uh, with Peter Kinder, I think that is a big issue and we need to look really hard is, at Is Peter Kinder's situation an ethics issue? I think it I is. I mean, what is, what is the ethics issue about that? I, I think that the what we play loose and fast here with, with our, our money, the reporting requirements. Well, that could have happened though any time. I mean, right. somebody could have. You, you, Here's it's a, already against the law, what here, happened. Here, yeah, so here's a great example, though. There, you don't have to report any subcontractors uh, in Missouri. And so campaigns, you know, hire a consultant. Can, you know, can, the campaign needs something. The consultant says, oh, I can do that for you. But they don't really do it themselves. They subcontract it out. None of that has to be mm -hmm. reported. You don't know who's getting money where. Uh, they don't have any requirement to report back on, on who's doing that work. And so, obviously, money... Uh, in his campaign account was getting funneled in, in places they didn't know or shouldn't have. And we'll see when all the facts come out. But I do think uh, it's a bigger part of the problem of how much money we, we have and is filtering through uh, with very little oversight. And what little oversight there is, there's not a lot of teeth to do anything about it uh, sure. over at the MEC. Sure. That was interesting. Is issue of the year. Well, I, th I think it, in Missouri, I think you got to say it's it's race relations. Uh, you yeah. know, we, we're in this post-Ferguson era, and then we have this uh, huge deal up at, at the Columbia campus, the Mizzou campus, uh, that uh, both both being national stories, really international stories, that have captivated the attention of the world. I mean, we we have to have a honest, frank conversation about race in this state and in this country, and uh, I think. We're focusing in the wrong area. I think that all these police reforms distract from the real issues that, that we need to address uh, in this era. Do you mean um, like with SB5? Well, I mean, not so much. SB5 was a, was a good bill. I think, uh, I think it needs to, there's some, some unintended consequences with it that they need to address. But, uh, you know, poverty, uh, failing schools, uh, other failing institutions in these communities, 
uh, crime, drug addiction. Uh, these are all issues that plague urban areas, and we can't we can't lie. I mean, uh, blacks are disproportionately born into poverty in this sure. country and in this state, and maybe we, solving that's a bigger thing. Well, and it's to. it's a tough tough yeah. issue. But I mean, to to say that anything else is the biggest issue of the year is. Uh, I, I think you're missing the mark. I'll try to raise you. There's one person that was a bigger issue than anything else. I think it was John Deal. John Deal came in at the start of the year saying, I have no Ferguson agenda. He had all the national press there waiting. He said no Ferguson agenda was over. Um, I think there, there'll be some ethics bill that ultimately gets signed by the governor and probably stems from that. And I think most of the legislative session revolved around his his abilities as speaker, and then obviously the end was, was dramatic. Um, let's go back to person of the year. Glenn, who would you have as the person of the year? Well, I'll just say negatively, it was uh, Speaker Deal and uh, uh, Senator Lavota and what, how they had to sure. exit the, the building. And uh, it was, was not good. There'll be a whole host of people that remember that, obviously. Unfortunately. There'll be editorial pages that remember that, but there'll be also folks that look back and say, if there's a, if there's a football stadium in St. Louis, John Deal was the person behind that. He was huge behind that tax cut. There were the congressional map. There's a litany of accomplishments. It'll be interesting to see if the editorial pages write history. It'll be one way. If other folks do, it'll be interesting to see how they balance that. Mm -hmm. Senator Dipsy, person of the year. Well, as the most interesting person uh, this year, I'd have to say... The Dos Equis man? Uh, no. no, but... No. Uh, not bad. Think about yeah. that. Um, no, I'd have to say Donald Trump. Uh, whether you yeah. like him, what he has to Every say, day. or you don't like what he has to say, everybody is reacting to when he makes a comment. And um, so it's it's really been his stage for the last several months, and um, you know, highly controversial. Um, you talked to a lot of people that you know their thought is, listen, he's I admire him because he says what a lot of people think but won't say sure. um, but you know but he also goes too far I think in in his comments mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think we might have seen that even his best supporters say you know a religious test in the country is too far and I think when when you're looking at the leader of the what I believe is still the greatest country in the world um, that leadership spot is tremendously important uh, personally here I'm going to have to agree with Senator Dempsey. Uh, Donald Trump has been driving the conversation well, he does. this entire year, and uh, I don't think anyone expected that. I expected him to take off uh, the You're way that he has. You're saying huge. <laughs> exactly. Did you have a person of the year? Well, if Donald, president, Donald Trump's going to be our next president, we need to bring back powdered wigs because that uh, head of hair he's got is, is horrendous. It's, I mean, i got to tell you, uh, I think it's still Barack Obama. I, his swan song uh, and his departure, I think, is so more guns really, like more Republicans than anybody ever, right? Well, exactly. I mean, he's uh, he still is the centerpiece of of the news, and and Donald Trump is getting all this attention because he's talking so much about Barack Obama. And we'll have to leave it there for this year on This Week in Missouri Politics. Our most important folks are our viewers. Thank you so much to KTVO, KRCG in Mid-Missouri, uh, KBSI in South Missouri, and KDNL. Thank you so much to Avatar. Helped us. Uh, First Rule and Rob Glessner have been great for us. And more importantly, Tom Tipton from ABC here in St. Louis. Thank you very much. We, uh, we appreciate especially all of you watching. And we'll see you next year.